So, Chris, you found yourself blocked by Rosebush. Um, well, ironic maybe, but at least not hypocritical. Rosebush makes no bones about blocking people. If you want to respond to this video, then please feel free. I probably won't block you. I've yet to block anyone. And I think the only reason that I would block someone is if they drop someone's personal details, say something illegal, or threaten other people. I might also be tempted for relentless spamming, but other than that, I'm not likely to moderate people's comments or censor them. First off, um, I'm sorry to hear that you lost a friend in the September the 11th attacks on the US. Um, I'm fortunate, I suppose, in that the closest I've come to being affected by this is losing one colleague in 2001 from our New York office, and another who worked in the same building as me here in London in 2005. And even with that level of separation, it felt personal. Um, to lose somebody close is orders of magnitude worse. I'm not even going to pretend that I know how that feels. That said, though, um, your loss doesn't really add to your argument. I certainly reject your accusation of cognitive restructuring. I don't feel that I'm reworking the facts or sugaring the pill to promote my agenda. I was drafting a response to your first PM when your second one came in, and I feel I have to point out where it is your argument that I feel falls short. You seem to have taken the same approach as quite a few others in an attempting an analogy of the building of this mosque in downtown Manhattan with building statues of Hitler at Belsen or Gestapo headquarters in cities bombed in World War II, or, to use your example, a KKK hangout next door to the NAACP. Well, here's the flaw. By making that analogy, you're implying that all Muslims share responsibility for what happened on the 11th of September 2001. That all Muslims in New York are complicit in the Al-Qaeda attacks. And there's no way around that. You're saying that the building of a Muslim place of worship is unacceptable, a slap in the face, because a group of terrorists, who happen to have been Muslims, committed this atrocity in which thousands of people were murdered, one of whom was your friend, and many of whom were actually Muslims. Does that make sense? I mean, honestly, if you think about it, that most people who would visit or use this mosque are involved with or support the 2001 attacks, that they want to take your freedom away. What worries me in what I'm seeing in the arguments for preventing the building of this mosque is that, by implication, it is demonising the whole of Islam and therefore Muslims. And that really doesn't make any sense. Let's say that somebody wanted to build a Catholic church within a few blocks of the site of the Alfred P. Murrah building in Oklahoma City, and a Protestant Christian was outraged because Timothy McVeigh was brought up a Catholic. Would you be in favour of blocking the building of the church for that reason? And what do you think most people would make of someone voicing that objection? Do you think that people would see that as a reasonable point of view, that all Catholics share responsibility for the Oklahoma City bombing. Because that's the basis of your argument against the mosque, that it is Islam that committed this atrocity, not the terrorists. You're failing to make a very important distinction. And the danger in this is that you end up demonising a group of people. The risk is not just in alienating Muslims, but putting lives in jeopardy. There's a large number of angry people out there, there's a large number of not very bright people out there, and there's going to be an overlap in those two groups, and angry and not very bright is not a very good combination. After the 2001 attacks, I can recall turning on the news and hearing that someone had taken it upon themselves to murder a Sikh at a petrol station in the US, shooting him because he was dark-skinned, was wearing a turban, and had a beard. I'm not saying it would have been any less of a tragedy had the victim been a Muslim. The point is that if you demonise a group of people, that group will often find themselves subjected to hatred and often violence, because some people will feel that they're justified in taking action against the enemy. And if you participate in the demonisation process, then this is where the shared responsibility does kick in, because... Unlike the majority of Muslims who have no part in the Islamist terrorist attacks, you are participating in the hate preaching process that actively leads to this violence. 
In spite of what some people may have told you, most Muslims do not wake up in the morning, have a quick pray to Mecca, and then prepare themselves for a productive day of plotting the slaughter of infidels. Most of them have the same worries as non-Muslims, getting the kids fed and off to school, and whether they can afford to pay the bills. Finally, I want to address this idea that you are somehow protecting your country by not allowing it to be overrun in the same way that we in Europe have allowed Islam to take over. This idea that all Muslims want to kill free speech and take away our freedom is a ridiculous stereotype. If you want to believe everything that Pat Condell says about Europe, about how Muslims have taken over the UK, then obviously that's your choice. But like believing in flying saucers or ghosts or rods, it's a choice that ignores the evidence that's in front of your very eyes. And that evidence is that you can see Pat Condell's videos. That he isn't in prison for denouncing religion, especially Islam. If Islam held even a tenth of the power in the UK that Pat Condell preaches from his YouTube pulpit, then he wouldn't be making those videos. And if you're honest with yourself, you know that that's true. And far from being soft-bellied, I think the defence of people's freedom is actually the tougher option. It's certainly tougher to defend the freedom of someone you disagree with than someone who shares your view. And it's certainly a lot easier to allow freedom to be taken away from someone whose views you oppose. You berate the hyper-tolerant and oh-so-politically correct. What's the alternative? Tyranny and oppression to make everyone to conform to the will of those in power, perhaps? Well, isn't that what caused your nation to be born in the first place? I think that how we need to view the building of this mosque is as a celebration of diversity and tolerance, because diversity and tolerance are the essential ingredients of the recipe that gives our society its strength. Being prepared to say, I won't allow the actions of madmen to alienate me from my fellow citizens. To say, I support the rights of people to live freely, even if some of those same people don't support my right to freedom. That's not being soft-bellied. That's not rolling over and playing dead. That's sticking to the fundamental principles that make our society and its values worthwhile, worth defending. Our tolerance... Our willingness to defend that tolerance, embrace our differences, even when it's difficult, especially when it's difficult, that is what will make us invincible. Because then the divide and conquer tactics of our enemies fail. And if we stop defending those parts of our freedoms and values, then, seriously Chris, what's the fucking point of defending the rest of them?